Hey guys, Mitch with Griffin Armament. Today we're going to talk about our silencers to your door program and what to expect from Griffin Armament as well as Capital Armory when you purchase under this program. What you're going to receive from us is this bubble mailer. Inside it you will find your muzzle device and or accessory depending on what silencer you purchase through us. You'll also find a bubble mailer that has a return label already on it for your fingerprint cards a how-to on how to roll your own fingerprints, two fingerprint cards. Uh, the reason we give you two is because if you mess the first one up, you have the second one to go on. If you mess them both up, you can reach out to us and we will get you an additional card. A welcome flyer with your four easy steps on how to complete your transaction, some stickers, and your ink pad for your fingerprints. Once you have this all opened up and ready to go, now we can move on to the other steps of the program. Here's the four easy steps on how to complete the paperwork with this transaction. Step one, by now Capital Armory should have sent you two separate emails. These emails contain information regarding steps two and three. Step two, follow the attached instructions to accurately take your fingerprints if they're already not on file. Then mail the completed fingerprint card to Griffin Armament. Create a profile at Capital Armory complete a web application, upload a form of digital ID, decide your trust type, and purchase a tax stamp. Once steps two and three are completed, you will be emailed a digital form four to fill out through DocuSign. And that's it. By now, step one should already be done, so we're gonna roll right into step two. Step two is to roll your own fingerprint cards. We include the how-to, the ink pad, and the two fingerprint cards in case you mess one up. Please follow this accurately. So step one, we want to wash our hands. That can be done with soap and water, or in this case, I have an alcohol pad. We wanna make sure we get our fingerprints nice and clean, and then dry before we use the ink pad. Because this is alcohol, I can pretty much just let my fingers air dry. Now, we are gonna to want to roll these one at a time. Go ahead and open up your ink pad. Try to keep your ink pad clear of dust and debris so that you don't have any smudges in your fingerprints. If we look at the fingerprint card, we have, that they're all labeled as far as right thumb, left thumb, left little, left ring, left middle, etc. So we're gonna take this, we wanna make sure that in our rolling fingerprints that we get, because we're rolling, we wanna make sure that we have the sides of our fingers covered in ink as well. So you just wanna lay your thumb on here gently, roll it around a couple times, make sure that you're really coating the fingerprint on your thumb well. So this is my right thumb and I wanna roll this on my right thumb. The easiest way to do this is to lay your finger on here on, the, on its side and roll nice and slow. Once you're done with that, you move on to your next finger. And same thing here with your, when we're still rolling, we wanna make sure that we're getting everything nice and coated. Just lightly. We start on the side of our finger and roll in. We want to make sure that we are staying within the blue lines. If you accidentally roll one on a blue line, chances are the government will not accept it. So that's why we include two of them in case you accidentally mess one up. Same thing with our right middle. We want to roll nice and easy. Make sure we're getting a good fingerprint on the card. Okay, now we want to do the same thing with our left hand. It is important to make sure that after you do your right to you know, try to clean your fingers off the best you can because you don't want any ink anywhere else on the card. So left thumb. to roll our left thumb. At the bottom of the fingerprint card, there are two slots for your, in your four fingers on, on your right and left hand. In this, we wanna make sure that we're again, staying in the blue lines. We don't wanna go outside of the blue lines. But at the bottom here, we need to make sure that we are placing our hands at a 45 degree angle. 
the, the government will not accept it if it is a straight on fingerprint. They have to be at a 45 degree angle within these two squares. So here we need to go a little bit quicker because we don't want the ink to dry and get bad fingerprints, but we will roll all four without placing our fingers. We want to do it all at the same time. And this is not a roll like the last fingers. This is just a press. And I recommend making sure your, hand, your fingers are nice and coated, lining, lining this up so that you are at a 45 and not gonna go outside these lines. Place your fingers down and give them a slight push. And then the same thing goes for your left hand. And the last step is to do your two thumbs. So we wanna make sure that our thumb is once again covered nicely. And then we come down on the right thumb. If we are not careful here and accidentally do something like this, this we cannot use. See, we, this is another reason, or the same reason why we give you two fingerprint cards. This is a whoops, we cannot do this. The government will not accept fingerprints that are over the line. So in this case, we would want to rewash our hands and move on to our second fingerprint card. If for some reason you mess up both of them, just reach out to our team that handles the exterior door program and we will get you additional fingerprint cards. Once you've completed your fingerprint card, you will have your rolled right thumb through your rolled pinky finger. And then you will have your rolled left thumb through your rolled pinky finger on that hand, as well as your 45 degree set of your four fingers on your right and your left, as well as a straight down thumb print of your right and left thumb. If you are missing a finger for any reason, please reference the flyer as we describe what to do in that situation. You also wanna make sure that you have your signature, your printed legal name, uh, your social security number, and any sort of information that's asked for up here, like your eye color, your hair color, etc. Once you are done with your fingerprints, you go ahead and shove them in this mailer that we send that already, like I said, already has the return label on and you mail that back to us. Once you've mailed that back to us, you wanna move on to step three. Step three is to create your profile at Capital Armory. If you've already done this and you're already a repeat customer, you can skip these, but if you're not, you'd wanna create your profile at Capital Armory complete the web application, upload a form of your digital ID, so a copy of your driver's license, decide your trust type, and purchase your tax stamp. Once you've purchased your tax stamp, Capital Army will email you a copy of a digital form four to fill out and submit to them. Once you've submitted that, then you just hurry up and wait. Once you've completed your digital form four, then we are hands off at that point. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Capital Army. Their contact information is on the back of this flyer that, with their phone number and also their email, info at capitalarmory.com. They will help you with any sort of wait time questions or questions about the product, etc. If worse comes to worse, you can always reach out to us and we will help you with whatever we can as well. Uh, in the meantime, while you're waiting for your suppressor, go ahead and mount that muzzle device, shoot it, enjoy it, uh, do some more research on the can that you bought. We've got awesome tech tips that show all of our cans and all of our different accessories. I hope you found this video instructional. Uh, thank you for watching this video and enjoy your new suppressor from Griffin Armament.